All right, we are back for my predictions and breakdown of UFC 301, which is headlined by Alejandre Pantoja defending his flyweight belt against Steve Urseg. And honestly, I think this card's very underrated. There's not a lot of big names on here, but in terms of the substance of the fights, I think there's some great fights on here. Pantoja versus Urseg is an amazing fight. Jose Aldo coming out of retirement and facing Jonathan Martinez is probably the fight I am most looking forward to on the entire card. Anthony Smith versus Vitor Petrini. You know, uh, I'll say it as it is. Anthony Smith is going out there to get slaughtered. Kyle Baralo versus Paul Craig is a good fight. Michelle Pereira versus Ihor Putier is a good fight. There's also the better of the two Bonfim brothers, Ismail Bonfim on the card. I think top to bottom, this card's pretty good. I mean, Alejandro Costa versus Kevin Borjas is opening the early prelims. But let's start with Anthony Smith taking on Vitor Petrino. And as I said earlier, the UFC is using Anthony Smith to build up the younger, hungry, up-and-coming guy. He's 26 years old, 11 and 0, undefeated and just running through guys, knocking guys out. His ridiculous power, great submissions on the ground. Whereas Anthony Smith has never really been the best striker. He's a really good grappler, has very good Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but he's never developed much of a wrestling game to get the fight to the ground and use his jiu-jitsu. And I don't see him getting Vitor Petrino down, who has very good takedown defense and is also just a huge guy. He's probably bigger than Anthony Smith, which is crazy because Anthony Smith is a very big 205er himself. And even if Anthony Smith gets this fight to the ground. I don't see him imposing his grappling super effectively on Petrino. Petrino is so strong on the ground. He's so strong on top and he'll advance to any position you give him. He's so good at transitioning. He's also a pretty strong wrestler. I think he could definitely take down Anthony Smith who doesn't have amazing takedown defense either. And on the feet, Smith is pretty technical. He's fairly diverse with what he throws, but he's not super fast and he doesn't have a lot of power. Whereas Petrino, although he can be pretty wild, is very powerful, very fast, has good head kicks, a good jab, he'll work behind, and Anthony Smith is fairly hittable. I mean, look at his last fight against Khalil Roundtree. Roundtree was just piecing him up. And he was almost flinching to Roundtree's power, and Petrino hits just as hard, if not harder than Roundtree. I mean, look at that knockout against Modestus Bukoskis. That guy hit so hard. And although Anthony Smith has a pretty good chin and a lot of heart, I mean, his nickname is literally Lionheart. I just don't think it's enough. So for my final prediction, I'm going to go with Vitor Petrino. I will take him by a second round knockout. I think Petrino will be able to defend all the takedowns, assuming Anthony Smith shoots them. He hasn't been shooting as many takedowns as he probably should, but also he's not the best wrestler. Whereas I think Petrino can take Anthony Smith down and pose his top game. And then even on the feet, although Petrino can be pretty hittable, Anthony Smith just doesn't have the power to threaten him. Whereas if Petrino lands one, Anthony Smith is going to sleep. So I am going to go with Vitor Petrino and I'll take him by a second round knockout. I think he drops Anthony Smith and then finishes him with ground and pound. And then we go to our co-main event. Jose Aldo is making his return, coming out of retirement and facing Jonathan Martinez. It will be interesting to see whether this this is Aldo's retirement fight because the last time he retired after the Marab fight, he didn't even retire in the cage. He retired later. It just didn't seem right for a legend like Aldo or whether he'll continue fighting after this. But I guess that's a question for another day because Jonathan Martinez is a very tough fight. Fairly young, 29 years old, has amazing leg kicks. One of the best leg kickers in the entire sport. He finished multiple guys with them. Finished Adrian Yanez was absolutely terrorizing Yanez's leg. Also finished Cub Swanson with those leg kicks and I'll throw him very similar to Justin Gaethje. He'll throw him moving forward, moving backward, in close, at range. He's so fast with them, so accurate with them. It is easily the best part of his game, but Jose Aldo, assuming he takes his Muay Thai stance, because if you didn't know, after Aldo retired from MMA, he went and had a few boxing matches, had three in total, and most notably had one against Jeremy Stevens. Hopefully he doesn't bring that boxing style stance over into MMA, because Jonathan Martinez is just going to tear that apart. I mean, look at the way he tore up Adrian Yanez's leg, who uses a boxing stance. But Jose Aldo, assuming he does take up that Muay Thai stance that he's known for, is one of the best leg kick defenders in all of the UFC. He has a very lightly leg, putting more weight on his back foot, which helps him check the kicks, helps him lift his leg above the kicks, just helps him defend those leg kicks, and he is very good at that. I mean, look at his last fight against Marab. His leg kicking defense was on point. I get it's Marab. He doesn't have great leg kicks, but still. I mean, look at the Pedro Munoz fight then. Munoz has very good leg kicks, and Aldo was still defending most of them. Plus, with 
with them both fighting out of opposite stances, that makes it easier for Aldo to defend the leg kicks because they're coming from the inside. Martinez throws inside leg kicks on orthodox fighters, and it's a lot easier for you to turn your leg in than it is for you to turn your leg out. So Aldo's going to have an easier time defending those leg kicks. He also has very good leg kicks of his own, although he really stopped throwing them. I mean, against Marab, he barely threw them, and the few he did were hurting Marab. And Martinez is decent at defending leg kicks, but he's not great. But Martinez will mix his kicks up. He doesn't just throw leg kicks. He'll throw to the body. He'll throw to the head. And as I said, they're both in opposite stances. That opens up that body and head kick to the power leg of Martinez. And he can use the leg kicks and the body kicks. Make Jose think the kicks are coming low and then come upstairs. Set up those head kicks. But Aldo does have very good head and body kicks of his own. And I don't like the way Jonathan Martinez defends head kicks. Look at the Saeed fight. Martinez was defending a lot of the head kicks with one hand, which is not ideal. You really want to defend head kicks with two hands. So it will be interesting to see if Aldo does decide to mix in those head kicks. It will be also interesting to see if either guy tries to mix in the takedowns. Now, I don't see a world where Jonathan Martinez takes Aldo down. He's not a great wrestler, and Aldo has probably the best takedown defense of all time. I mean, Marab shot 16 takedowns and didn't get a single one, and if Marab's not taking him down, Jonathan Martinez isn't taking him down. Whereas, on the flip side, Aldo has pretty good takedowns, pretty good grappling. Now, Jonathan Martinez does have pretty good takedown defense and is a very good grappler on the ground. I mean, he was reversing positions against Saeed, attempting submissions on the ground, but I could see Aldo potentially trying to mix in the takedowns, and even if he doesn't get them, that should open up the strikes for him. But where Aldo is going to have his biggest advantage in this fight is with his boxing. He is a much better boxer than Jonathan Martinez. Martinez keeps his hands up and his chin low, which I like, but besides that, his boxing defense isn't very good. He doesn't move his head at all. He can get caught stationary in the pocket, not moving away, and when he does move away, he always backs away in a straight line. He doesn't use much lateral movement, and although him keeping his hands up is a good thing for his head defense, it really opens up the body because of how high he keeps his hands. And Aldo is very good at working the body, especially with his lead hand. We saw him use left hooks to the body, left jabs to the body in the Marab fight, in the Moicano fight. Aldo is just very good at mixing in the body shots, but because Martinez is a southpaw, that left hook to the body that Aldo loves isn't really there, but that right cross, which we saw Cub Swanson use against Jonathan Martinez is. And I think with Aldo mixing in the body shots, those head shots will start to open up because Martinez is going to drop his hands. And even offensively, Martinez still isn't great with his boxing. He throws very awkward shots coming from weird angles that I think Aldo's going to be able to counter all day. And defensively, Aldo is very good as well. He's very hard to hit to the head. Now he does cover up with a very tight high guard that makes it hard to land to the head, but that does open up the body for Martinez. And I think attacking the body with those roundhouses, with those left hooks is going to be a big part of Martinez's game plan. And if it ends up in the clinch, use those knees and elbows that he's been using in a lot of his past fights. But overall, I really like Aldo in this fight. The only thing that worries me is the fact that he's 37 years old, getting up there in age, whereas Jonathan Martinez is the much younger fighter, 30 years old, in his prime. As well, Aldo hasn't fought in MMA specifically in over a year and a half. And even in boxing, he hasn't had a boxing fight in almost a year. That's the only thing that's worrying me. But I mean, you look at his fight against Jeremy Stevens. He still looked fast despite his age. His cardio looked good. Martinez also has very good cardio. I don't think cardio will be an issue for either guy in this fight. You know what? I'm going to go with the underdog, Jose Aldo. When you look at this fight stylistically, I really like it for Aldo. Assuming he takes that Muay Thai stance, which is what he used in his most recent MMA fights, he is very good at defending the light kicks, which immediately takes away Jonathan Martinez's best weapon. He's very good at defending head kicks as well. He keeps his hands up. Now that body kick, I think, will be there for Martinez. I think that's going to be one of Martinez's best weapons in this fight. I also think Martinez could utilize the clinch very successfully where he throws more knees and elbows. He's very good at that, but so is Aldo. Aldo's also very good in the clinch, but I think Aldo's going to be able to pick him apart in the boxing. Martinez leaves so many holes defensively, doesn't move his head at all, and I think Aldo's going to be able to counter a lot of those awkward overextending punches. So I'm going to take Jose Aldo. I'll go with him by decision. Jonathan Martinez has a very good chin. I know he's been knocked out before, but he was taking bombs against Saeed. So I don't see Aldo knocking him out, but man, is this a hard fight to predict? And then finally, we get to our main event, Alejandre Pantoja defending his flyweight belt against Steve Urseg. Urseg is a very good boxer, especially from range. He's very long for the division, five foot eight with a 68 inch reach. He's a lot longer than Pantoja. He has a good jab, a very good right cross. That is his best punch. He's so fast, so accurate. He's very smooth with his footwork as well. And we know Pantoja doesn't have great defense. He doesn't really move his head. He throws these wide winging shots. He is 
is also pretty reckless coming into range, leaving himself very defenseless. So I think Urseg is going to be able to counter him, slide just out of range, one, two, right hand. He's so fast to counter his opponents. He also has pretty good head movement, especially at range. He'll slide just out of the way of punches and then counter. But where he really struggles on the feet is in the pocket. He can get caught pretty flat footed. He doesn't use much head movement there. And although he's got good combinations, he leaves himself super defenseless and he sort of decides to just trade with his opponents. And that's how Matt Schnell was able to catch him and rock him. And Matt Schnell doesn't have near the power that Pantoja possesses. And if Pantoja gets in the pocket with him being more of a brawler on the feet instead of a technical fighter and Urseg starts to trade with him, I think Pantoja wins that. I think he's got more power and I definitely think he has a better chin. I mean, Urseg was getting rocked by Costa. He was getting rocked by Schnell. Whereas Pantoja has probably the best chin in that flyweight division. I mean, he's only been dropped once and it took Davis and Figueredo, the hardest hitting 125er ever to do it. And I still do have questions about how much power Steve Urseg has. I know he knocked out Matt Schnell with one punch, but at the same time, who hasn't knocked out Matt Schnell with one punch? Steve Urseg also really struggles moving on the back foot. He doesn't do well moving backwards. That's where he really gets caught. When he's going forward or stationary, his distance management is very good. His ability to hit and not get hit is very good. But once he starts moving backwards, he gets caught. He got caught so many times against Costa when he was moving back. And whenever he gets caught, it's almost always with a right hand, whether that's an overhand or a right straight, which is Pantoja's best punch. And we know Pantoja really likes to put the pressure on his opponents, and Steve Ursag really struggles when opponents put the pressure on him. I think Pantoja will also have a lot of success in the grappling. Although Urseg is a good grappler himself, he's fairly untested in the UFC. He has shot some takedowns and gotten some of them, but on the ground, although he's got some decent positions and he's good at scrambling, he's not great with his control. So I would say Pantoja is the better grappler and is definitely going to have an advantage there. He's so good with his control. He's so quick to take your back, has very good chokes. And we saw in the Costa fight that Steve Ursag does sometimes give up his back when he's trying to get up. And if he does that against Pantoja, Pantoja's going to get his hook straight in, going to get to the body triangle, and he's going to hold him there, attempting chokes, making it a real hard time for Steve Urseg. And I would say Pantoja does have the wrestling to take him down. I mean, we haven't really seen Urseg's takedown defense really get tested. It got tested against Costa, but Costa's not that great of a wrestler. He's so good in the clinch, so strong there. He gets a lot of his takedowns from the clinch, whether that's a body lock, whether that's a trip, and then he'll get straight onto your back if you give it up, just like he did in the Alex Perez fight. And although Urseg looks good in the scrambles. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get up from the bottom against Pantoja, who has very good control. But for my final prediction, I think it is way closer than what a lot of people are saying. Urseg's boxing is so smooth from the outside. He's so quick, so accurate with his jab, with his cross. If he can keep Pantoja at range with his jab, with his right cross, with those teeps to the body, I don't think Pantoja has much for him. Pantoja has zero ability to strike from range with Steve Urseg. Urseg's game plan should be able to put the pressure on Pantoja, but you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to walk into a takedown or walk into a big right hand and use a lot more lateral movement than you've been using. Just keep Pantoja at range, out of the pocket, out of the clinch, because at distance with how bad Pantoja striking defense is and with how accurate Steve Urseg is, he's just going to pick him apart. But I think Pantoja is going to put the pressure on him, is going to put him on the back foot, and as we've seen in Urseg's past fights, he really struggles on the back foot. He gets caught a lot with that overhand right, which is Pantoja's best punch, and then off that right hand he's going to look to get in the clinch, get this fight down, take his back the second Steve Urseg gives it up, and then control him on the ground, attempting any submission Urseg will give him. So for my final prediction, I am going to go with Pantoja. On the feet, I think Urseg is going to give him a real tough time, but when this fight gets to the ground, because I don't think Urseg has the takedown defense to keep this fight standing, I think Pantoja is just going to outgrapple him, and I think Pantoja does eventually find a submission. I think he gets him with a rear naked sometime in the middle of the fight, third round maybe. So I am going to go with Pantoja and I will take him by a third round submission. So that's it. Those are my final predictions for UFC 301. It's a decent card overall and I will cover all the fights after they happen. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Turn on post notifications. Like the video if you did enjoy. Leave your predictions for this card in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.